action and welcome back to bleacher bum tv episode 21 we usually throw a party for 21st right we're gonna do it today it's carl here barstool chicago i got danny lance on the ones and twos we've talked a lot this season about where the cubs are going it's been doomy and gloomy sometimes we've tried to stay positive we have a special guest this week jake arietta who better to talk about uh like being on the cubs when they're not good and then being on the cubs when they're very good and I guess just to start, thank you very much for yeah, thanks joining for us me. on Bleacher Bum TV. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. And it seems like uh, Jed Hoyer believes this team is reminiscent of 2014. Okay. So reason for optimism should be exciting. We'll, we'll see if that's the case or not. So when you're on the 2014 team, there's like different pieces and different guys, or is it more of like a culture and a vibe when you guys are showing up to the field feeling like, hey, we're just a couple breaks away? Or is it more like, hey, we like this guy at first base, we like this guy at shortstop? Well, we had... Um, we had pieces in the big leagues and then we had a group of young guys that were coming up and they had really good draft picks and they knew that something was on the horizon. Didn't necessarily know it was going to turn out the way it did, but it went pretty well for us for, you know, four or five years. Because we're sitting here and we talk a lot about like, oh, this guy's coming up. We're back in that phase of like, did you see Pete Crow Armstrong, Brennan Davis coming back from the back surgery, Hayden West Nesky, obviously the trade piece this year, but him having a flourishing debut where you start to look at these guys and say, man, I really think they can be a part of where this team's going. The big piece then is getting guys in. We had a trade for you. Getting guys in, We had yeah, a sign sure, luster. Sure. So that's kind of like the next piece this off season. Uh, one thing I've talked about is like, do you think Nico Horner can play center, second, short? Like, would you be interested in getting like a Trey Turner or a Carlos Correa, one of these high end shortstops to play next to Nico? Or would you be like, we're good with shortstop now? Well, I think he can definitely play the position. Uh, but if you can get one of those big free agents, you definitely want to try and bring him in if you're willing to spend that kind of money. And then one of those guys could say two years down the road, hey, I'll move over to third base or... Yeah, I mean, I think most guys, if, if it's going to be uh, best for the team, I don't, I don't think anyone has a problem making that transition. Like, mm -hmm. if it's going to make our team better and this guy, if he happens to be better than me at shortstop or second base, whatever the case is, I think most guys would be happy to move around. The bats in the lineup. Like, I don't think people understand yeah. that, like, the value there is you have a great... You just have like this great player that can, uh, you know, not be overpowered. is not strike out very often, very high line drive percentages and stuff. So from like perspective of building off of what you have now, he certainly isn't going anywhere. Ian Happ's another guy we talk about. Great guy. Yeah, let's get Happ locked yeah. up. Right? Let, let's get in. Let's keep him in that uniform for, you know, how, how many? Four or five more years? And people talk about the clubhouse. Like he's got to be one of those teammates where just every day it's so smooth and consistent. Even keel. Yeah. E very even keel. And that's probably one of the, the best qualities of, of a major league player is can you can you manage the peaks and valleys and can you stay um, stay even keeled, don't get overly emotional one way or the other. And he's definitely one of those guys that does that. Yeah. Now, do you have good memories when you come back? You, we walked around Wrigley Field earlier yeah. today. Oh, yeah. And uh, that sentiment, I think something came up earlier. Someone said, are, are you still a fan of the Cubs? What's it like to come back and kind of mm -hmm. see, the, you know, see the ball? Well, I told you, we had to go for a walk earlier. You know, <laughs> had, needed some fresh air and... Uh, just wanted to walk by Wrigley and check it out because every time you come here, there's new new additions and, and new changes, construction. It's pretty amazing to see. Um, yeah, this is the city's very special. Can we go back to your your dominant run in 2015? Uh, some of the like you know off record conversations we've had about the P Pittsburgh Pirates game. Yeah. I know that sentiment. There's a lot of people here watching this would like to hear it from from you directly. Did you like know ahead of time that you were going to shut down the Pirates? Did you know going into that game? Did you have like a crystal well, I mean, ball? Did, did, I, that's, that's did what I Christina expected. Lackey say yeah. the premonition? You're she gonna didn't have she, I, she didn't have one there, but I expected to do that. And you, but you can still have those ex expectations yeah. and uh, and go out there and, and get beat, right? But that's that's the mindset. And I was just on a roll. Um, everything was pretty dialed in. So there, you know, and there were some calls there on strike three calls that were a little. Uh, you were borderline. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. I was around the zone enough uh, with good stuff to, you know, to get the benefit of the doubt. But, yeah, I was I was tuned up pretty good. Because the, the basic premise of Bleacher Bum TV is we're just like week by week, we're just showing up. We're talking about the Cubs. Sometimes we have good weeks. Sometimes we have bad weeks. And knowing that you just stack those good weeks together and it shouldn't be too long until we're back in a position dipping out of work at 12 30 because we got that playoff game at you know four o'clock or whatever that energy that vibe that excitement i don't think the cubs are as far away as they were as how i felt at the start it can happen quickly it did for us but so many things aligned basically perfectly for that to happen 
you get you get the right guys in, you know, before the season or free agency, you make a nice trade. And then, you know, we had four or five prospects, high level prospects that came in and were good almost immediately. But that's pretty rare. Yeah. You know, you're hoping that two of them are really good Two, you know, two might struggle. But we had a, you know, we had good fortune there with the way they performed. Okay, but be positive now and tell me that like the good fortune. Is no, I mean it, it could be it could I'm be it could happen it right quick. Yeah. I don't think it's crazy to think that the Cubs could be somewhat competitive next year. And it could happen. If you have if you have arms, uh, they can hold their own. I mean, because when you're going against St. Louis and, and Milwaukee and then I mean the other teams they're they're not they're not slouches. They're not just going to let you beat them. Yeah, we spent a lot of time last week talking about Albert Pujols and the Cardinals, and it's just amazing what they built. And you see Arenado and Goldschmidt are competing for, you know, they'll be competing for MVP, MVP awards at the corners. And, and Goldschmidt could p- potentially win the Triple Crown. Wainwright still has a pulse. Yachty's still going. That, that yeah. end is going to – it's crazy to think, though, that while you guys were at your peak, they're still going. They are, yeah. They – the way they've been able to stretch this out and just be in uh, contention or be highly competitive year in, year out, you got to respect it. You know, even if you're a Cubs fan, you're just like, damn, they're, they're pretty good at this fucking thing. I got a sentimental question to ask you, but first, a word from? God, one How about it? Yeah, what you one handed You told me one hand. You had to one hand. Uh, could you hold this beef kit for yeah, a second? I'm going to explain. It looks great we in got your hands. Uh, Jim Graziano, JP Graziano. We're working on a beef. We The boxes are back. We're fully stocked, loaded, ready to go. It's baptism season. It's beef kit season. Obviously, Bears undefeated 1-0. We have a special promo we're running. You guys tune into Redline Radio for now. If you guys can do me a favor, please reply to this with a video of your baptism from this Sunday for the Bears game. The best baptisms. I'm going to round them up. We're going to do a power countdown. The top three, top five baptisms. Uh, the best baptisms will get a special gift from me personally, a signed beef kit, or as they send you a big package from Jim. I want to see your baptisms. Show it to me. This is when the guys boil the beef and they pour it over the broth, or the broth over the beef. They get the juices going with the mm-hmm. with the jardinier, put it on the slow cooker, cook it for a couple hours, let the let the moisture and the juice and the, soak into the meat. Some people like to light a candle this time of year, but people are into pumpkin spice. No, it's Italian beef season in my house. Okay. Yeah. So if you guys send me your baptisms, we're going to round the baptisms up. Best ones get a beef. What do you think of that? I like that a We're going to autograph this yeah, one. Like You're going to send it. We'll do an autograph, Jake. Or whatever, you, whatever you need. <laughs> That's a great spirit. Whatever you need. That's a great attitude. All right, let's keep the good attitude rolling here. Uh, Bleacher Bum TV, guys, honestly, delighted to have Jake in studio with us. This isn't just like some one-off interview for Bleacher Bum TV. We're hosting Starting Nine together. Every Tuesday and Thursday, episodes are out at 8 a.m. Central Time. We're chopping up the league. We're telling stories about old, you know, stuff. And great guests. Yeah. Hell hell of a lineup, and it's getting better and better and better. This is my own personal little, like, video project that I carved out this year because I very much like talking baseball, and I want to have, like, a one-on-one thing with Cubs fans. You're good at talking baseball. I didn't know that. Thank you very much. Yeah. I didn't know that we were going to work on Starting Nine together. Or that like some stuff would come, yeah. so we committed to the project. And every week, it's just one of my favorite things to do is come in here good, and talk good. about the Cubs. Well, congrats on twenty one. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank mm-hmm. you. Congrats on starting nine. Yeah, oh, thanks. You too. Yeah, we have episode thirty six. We're about to go about record to do with it. Anthony Renato. Yeah, um, that'll be fun. But from your sincere opinion, we talked about this. Like you are the Cubs are your team. Mm-hmm. A lot of teams you have affinity to different players yeah. and stuff. They're still your team. It's not as far away though. Like they can be back. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just no not like you think it. on the front office and Jen just kind of getting some more talent. And well, it depends on what they want to do and when they want to do it. Like when they want to make certain moves. Because, I mean, they, they will spend the money. They have the money, right? They have, of course they have the money. It just depends on uh, what their plan looks like. Is it a five-year plan? Ten-year plan? And for Never me, know. as long as that plan ends with, like, hold that trophy. Yeah. Back, or at and, least try to. And, and a lot of that plan is dictated by how, the, how their guys perform. The young guys. We need another one of you. Need another one. So either one, come back know. or go find one. I might be able to help. I might be able, <laughs> no, might be, we're not. This no, isn't no, no, a comeback no, no, episode. Plan. I might be able to help them it's find a one. episode. You know, I got a decent eye, so we'll see what happens. Okay. This is Bleacher Bum TV. This is episode 21. It's Danny Lance behind the mic. We'll follow that guy. He's the best. Uh, until next week, guys. Thanks, Jake, for coming in. Go subscribe to Starting yeah. 9. Subscribe to Barstool Chicago. We'll be back next week. Hey, how you doing? 